what common foods in your country are considered delicacies by foreigners. Hmm, forest berries perhaps. I live in Finland, we have a lot of forests, so lot of berries such as blueberries and lingonberries. Every man's rights mean that you can just go and pick as much as you can find. It's kinda one of those things where if you live near any forested area, and are willing to spend time there come late summer, you'll probably have enough to last until next year in your freezer. We have so much berries that people from poorer countries, Thailand is a common one for some reason, are hired to pick them up, because doing berry picking enough to actually profit monetarily is heavy work, and apparently the pay isn't worth it for most Finns. At the same time, forest berries are considered a superfood around the world, very healthy and trendy. They know about actual delicacy status, but definitely, a difference in how we think about them. Hello Umi Cheese It's a huge staple in Cyprus and we eat it all the times but in the US I only ever see it as bar bucks and sometimes at exotic cheese plates. Edit for the Hello Umi lovers out there try white bread, Hello Umi and strawberry jam. You are welcome. Edit too. Try Hello Umi with watermelon, a groundbreaking combo that is the staple of many summer evenings. Falafel. This is basically poor people food in Egypt along with other type of bean, called fuel. Both of these are the cheapest kind of meal you get off food carts. You can feed a whole family on less than one dollar. On the other hand, American fast food is considered fancy. Getting dinner from McDonald's is a thing for special occasion. So seeing fa. Jada. In its core it's working class food, though usually a fancier version is considered a delicacy, and it's rarely as good as the real thing BTW. Also those are not as known but when I lived abroad I blew people's mind with powder quicho and the gadero, which are incredibly common and easy to make. Fried chicken. It's actually become a special holiday meal in countries like Japan where you have to reserve your bucket weeks in advance, mainly because of clever marketing, but here, people would laugh so hard at that, cause it's just fried chicken, at a damn 5k plus votes. This is easily the most popular thing I have ever posted on Reddit. I live in Japan but I'm from the US. Whenever I go back home I buy a few bags of lint chocolates from the drugstore as souvenirs. They're dirt cheap in the US, but for whatever reason there are luxury chocolate in Japan, and the same bags would cost $30 here. More of an out of state thing, but I live in Hawaii and I was so confused when I went to a poke shop on the mainland. It was so expensive for barely any poke and they offered to put word stuff in it like pineapple. You can buy a pound of ish or poke from my local supermarket spoke counter for like 15 bucks. Same price they were charging for a bowl of subpar stuff on the mainland. I ate something from a street vendor in Beijing in China that was one of the tastiest things I have ever had in my entire life. I don't know what it was, sort of like a crepe, crunchy and savory. Bean sprouts? Egg. I don't know to this day. I would literally kill someone to have it again. I, Canadian, was visiting a friend in France, and we were planning to visit Strasbourg for a few days. I mentioned that that's where Kronberg beer is brewed, maybe we could take a tour. Surely freshly made Kronberg blank is divine. She looked at me in horror and told me that's a redneck beer. In Canada a six pack will set you back about $15. It's fancy lol. Edit, so are a lot of beers here, but still, there it's on par with Molson or Budweiser. We never did tour the factory, but I drank cheap bottles of it the whole time I was in the country, while she watched in disgust. Not country to country, but state to state. I live in Maine which is prime lobster territory in the US. I can get it cheaper here than most other places on the planet. TBH, I really don't get the hype. The effort to crack it open and pull out the meat is not worth the payoff. Just drink a cup of melted butter. That's all you can taste anyway. 
Info, they were literally sold in every street in Vietnam and they're considered exotic and valued here in the US. And it turns out this isn't really true. I just happen to live in an area where there's barely any info and I don't travel around the US a lot smile. Craner worst or carniolan sausage protected by EU for being Slovenian speciality that can only be made here but loved and eaten by millions of Germans and Austrians. Edit, it's the name that can't be used if made outside of Slovenia and sold commercially not the actual sausage. In Jewish cuisine, corned beef tongue is a very expensive delicacy you can only still get at a handful of high-end kosher delis these days. Then many years later I learned that tongue is a popular and cheap taco meat in Mexican cuisine, and is also really delicious. Although it's been going up in price in the US as more people realize how yummy tongue is. Not exactly the same thing, but in high school we had some German exchange students come for a semester, and I ended up hanging out with one who had joined the football team, for the complete American high school experience TM. After practice a lot, there was a subway not too far away from school, so we'd often go there after practice and he just absolutely lost his mind over it. He thought the whole idea was the most wonderful thing in the world. He was nervous ordering initially, even though his English was better than mine lol. But you should have seen his face light up going down the line and picking out the toppings he wanted every single time we went. Not exactly the same. But I'm from Morgan and now refuse to pay for blackberries. Blackberries just grow in your backyard or along the road. No need to buy them, just grab a bucket and go prospecting. I love blackberries, but it hurts my heart to see them in tiny plastic containers at exorbitant prices. Oyster mushrooms are $11 a pound at our local grocery. I used to scrap them off birch trees with a hoe. Fill up a trash bag with them, haul them home and spend a couple of hours cleaning them and picking off the slugs. That would last us a year. The idea of actually paying for them still shocks me. Yarsha gumba is a rare herb. When I was very young we used to go and pick them from the forest and eat it with milk. Nowadays their international price is $130,000 per kg. Crazy right? Edit, I am from Nepal. Yarsha Gumba is found in hilly region of Nepal. Nowadays government has banned the collection of Yarsha Gumba, so it is now rare to us also. My ex-girlfriend was from Thailand and when she was with me in my country I got her strawberries. The first time I got her a box of strawberries she was so happy because in Thailand strawberries are apparently expensive. We had vanilla ice cream and strawberries for dessert that day. Fond memories. Ike if this counts. But West Virginia is kind of its own country. Anyways ramps are a delicacy to people who are not from here. In early spring they grow almost anywhere. They taste like garlic and an onion had a baby, and was rocked in the cradle to country roads. People use them for almost anything cooking here. Popularity for them has risen to the point that the vast patches, one hundreds of acres, are mostly getting picked. Haggis. I've heard it's even illegal in the States. Here in Scotland every morning we wake up and put on our kilts and go straight down the stairs for a big bowl of haggis. It really sets you up for a day of monster hunting, freedom fighting or running around the hills to catch more haggis. The wee buggers have been elusive lately though. When I was in China pizza was nuts to get. We had to travel to the local regional capital to get Pizza Hut and it was a well-dressed sit-down event. In the town we lived in you could only get pizza at the city's fanciest cafe, with like the workers doing group exercises and chanting in front of it in uniform as part of their morning routine. KFC was huge there as well, lines out the door. But there were dozens of knockoff guys that fried chicken like RSC, rainy Sunday chicken, and BFC, so it wasn't hard to get. But even the shitty pizza cheese that would get on like blackjacks was rare unless you were in very big city. 
salmon and most seafood, it is expensive in other countries. At home we always have a seafood, salmon day a week, and it is very very cheap. Oysters too, we have a place where they collect them fresh, we eat them out of the shell. Cheap and delicious. We had some Japanese exchange students at our university in the US, and when they saw the cubed melon on the salad bar, the standard watermelon slash cantaloupe slash honeydew mix, they thought we were living like royalty. Apparently melon is a really expensive, special occasion food over there. Avocados, now there is even organized crime killing for a land to produce more avocados. Because demand is so high, our own national fruit is very expensive for the lower class. Imagine if corn was suddenly bought 50 times more because some rich people like it. So now people are killing others to get land for corn and basic dishes of it are now expensive for the lower class. There are lots of regional variety things that a lot of people within the US itself doesn't know about BC of how huge everything is. I'm from Michigan, so our list of good and unique foodstuffs is pasties, Cornish meat pies, Superman and Blue Moon ice cream, and Detroit style pizza. Squacron, soft, creamy, thick cheese, with slightly tart taste kinda like a yogurt, but better with piadina, unleavened grilled flat bread. You can buy it in little piadina stands along the road. Part of my family come from the Emilia Romagna region in Italy and the food there is amazing. I love to have piadina with squacron and preserved figs. It's so luxurious, but so simple and cheap. When I lived in France and came back to the US for my annual visit I was asked to bring back chocolate, wines, male mustards and vinegars mostly. I drew the line at cheese, afraid it would melt or something in my bags. Going back to France my bags would be full of jars of peanut butter, cans of jalapenos, and all the varieties of M and M's for my co-workers. I understood the PB and jalapenos, not a Mexican restaurant in sight for 5 yoctoseconds, and forget buying hot peppers in the store, just didn't exist. But the M and M's confused me. I mean, there is no comparison between the chocolate you can buy in Europe and what passes as chocolate in the US. Venison. I'm from Iowa and venison here is so common, from the amount of deer and deer hunters we have, that it's often given away from one hunter to another just because they have too much. I learned from some Japanese and Chinese students at my university that venison to them is like wajit for us. I gave them each some to cook and they were very grateful. I like venison, it's just not that special though. I primarily hunt because by the time I process everything it's extremely cheap food compared to buying meat at the store. Basically a dollar s 60 license plus maybe a dollar 35 bullet plus time involved for 60 80 pounds of meat 25 to 35 kilograms sure there's some other costs involved like the cost of my gun but i enjoy target shooting as a hobby so i'd probably have it regardless of if i hunted or not i only hunt for the meat so no meat goes to waste even the heart which is a delicacy even to me a once yearly event Coleman's mustard powder. I am a writ living in Germany. My family always just had this mustard at home. We used to get it when we went to England and bring it back. Then one day I watched a cooking show and they were using this mustard powder and that you could perhaps get it in some special delicacy shops. Cheese and onion flavored crisps. Ten years ago, roughly, Germany introduced this brand new exiting flavor. I was baffled. My friends went nuts for them and I just thought, yes they're really good. I have been enjoying them since I was a little girl. Italian sauces. You can make some good ragu with just some tomato, some vegetables and some minced meat. It's probably one of the most famous plate in Italy and even though a really good one takes 6 hour and can make an above average good ragu in an hour and not so much effort. When I went to Portugal people were amazed by some of that. I was honestly surprised since the one I made really effortlessly and without good ingredients was not really good to me. 
You Balea, in the Philippines, Yub is a Filipino desert known for its purple color, but due to Korean and Japanese fusion desert techniques, it's become very popular outside the country. I have Korean and Chinese extended family and they enjoy Yub ice cream. Yub cake. Yub crepes and other creations. Conk. The national dish of the Bahamas. Back home, we eat it raw or cooked. Any day of the week, conch fritters, conch salad, conch chowder, conch burgers, cracked conch, scorched conch, conch soup. You name it, we'll cook it with conch. Tourists see it as a delicacy, some are afraid to even try it. But for us, it's just our local food we love. Budweiser beer, and it fucking blows my mind. Budweiser is one of the shittiest tasting beers ever made. It's cheap beer for people with zero class and zero taste buds. Seeing foreigners nerd out over Bud and Bud Light really takes the fucking wind out of my sails. Just stop being dumb. Water. Our tap water is perfect and no local ever buys bottled. Iceland, and it. A lot of people are mentioning the sulfur smell of the hot water, and that depends on the area. For example where I live the hot water comes directly from a nearby hot spring area so naturally it's gonna have a smell. Locals don't smell it though. For drinking water you just need to run the tap for a bit. That will get any hot water out of the pipes and bring you spraying water. Thanks for the upvotes etc etc etc. Canada Maple syrup Very common plentiful product but rest of the world treats it like gold. In the tourist shops they sell it in super small bottles with outrageous markup as if it's precious but you can buy like a liter of it in grocery store and it's better quality for a fraction of the price. I'm from Russia and I had an acquaintance who was going to marry an Irish guy. They lived in Russia for some time the guy went completely bonkers for caviar of Kaplan fish. It's not really a delicacy, it's not rare or expensive at all, probably a prox dollar 2.53 a can. But he liked it so much he wanted to bring a crate of it for their wedding in Europe. Needless to say his soon to be wife wife was not amused. Imagine wanting to bring a crate of peanut butter or something to your wedding. Durian The number of durian farmers who have found overnight wealth are astonishing due to export demand. Edit Wow didn't expect my comment to explode overnight. Thanks Redditors. The comment section mentioned Singapore. Due to land scarcity, the durian you have tested are either from Malaysia, where I'm from, or Thailand. Singapore and China are our biggest exporters. Also, during pre-COVID times, hundreds of coaches ferrying Chinese tourists would visit these commercialized durian orchards on a daily basis for their durian fix. They are offered an all-you-can-eat service for a fixed price. In other words, it's a durian buffet. My family owns about few hundred trees of durian on our land but it's only for own consumption and we'll share it with our friends and family when the harvest is huge. We are far from commercial scale. Durian is an acquired taste and very polarizing. You either love it or hate it. I'm the latter and the only one in my family, to the dismay of my family. Growing up around the scent, it doesn't bother me, just dislike the taste. However, I still respect it as the king of the fruit. Do maple syrup or poutine count? I know at least, in university I had a friend who came up from the US and thought poutine was the greatest thing ever. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised more of the US hasn't adopted it. Fries, cheese curds, and gravy, sounds more like an American thing. Not sure what other countries' opinions on it are. Any kind of sheep meat, lamb, mutton, etc. In non-sheep countries it can be quite expensive. Here it is the cheapest meat and commonly used instead of pork as the filler meat in grocery store products such as sausages. Also, fresh fish. The fish processing time is pretty short here, with fish instantly getting unloaded and sent to factories after the boats arrive, and then quickly processed and sold to consumers, so that the fish is even fresher than in some other seaside countries. 